All right, I believe everybody can see my screen. Just use the chat box if you can see my screen, just use the chat box, yes or no. If you can see my screen clearly, just use the chat box, okay? And let us make sure that every mics are turned off so that there wouldn't be distractions throughout, okay? Yes, sir. All right, let's proceed. So you all are super welcome to the Bullish Bear FX 2020, sorry, 2021, 2022, <laughs> what's wrong with me? All right, so you all are super welcome to this academic section. Just like uh, last year was very awesome. We had a huge turn up last year. Uh, this year's own, I don't know, I don't know. All right, but whatever it might be, I'm super happy to have you all here and I will try my best to make sure that uh, you all get the best of knowledge of how to trade the financial markets this year, 2022. All right. So uh, don't mind what you see here, 20 days here is two months. You already know. Okay. So the ultimate guide to Forex trading with Team Legend. All right. So the things that we are all going to be learning during our journey in this trading uh training is how to trade the markets all right now you, the, your our number one goal is we want to make a living from trading the financial markets a lot of us want to make sure that we leave the nine to five job that we do and get to work from home work using our phones trade and make this money and be free from nine to five jobs. That is all our dreams. And I pray that by the grace of God, so shall it be unto us. So uh, I would love us to pray before we proceed because that's the ultimate thing. This is the very first day of this program. So let us pray. A heavenly Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, I thank you so much for this wonderful training session, 2022. Thank you for last year and thank you for this year. I pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, that by your grace and by your mercy, Lord, everything that is going to be taught this year, your children will understand. Your children will use it to gain a new skill and develop a new career to lift them up financially and otherwise in the name of Jesus. I pray that you have your way, take your place. I declare understanding upon every single one of us, even including I teaching and your, and your children who are also learning. I declare understanding. I declare wisdom and the grace to learn. And at the end of the day, the grace to win in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. Once again, you're welcome. And welcome to all those uh, who, jo who joined later after we had started you're not late at all because we just started so i remain your one and only for a skill coach team legend so you're welcome to bba fx academy 2022 now we are here to learn how to trade the financial market which is the forex market now the first question that would come into your mind is what is this forex all about all right what is forex and i I told you guys to make sure you have your pen and your book with you. You should have a Forex note, all right? Because I don't want you to just learn how to trade. I want you to learn so that you can also learn how to teach people in the nearest future. So that is why it's important that you have a Forex notebook so that you can always note things down, jot things down, things that you can use to teach others in the nearest future. All right, so make sure you have that book, especially for Forex trading. Let it not just be a jota or any kind of book. All right, maybe I didn't inform you guys on time. So by tomorrow morning, go get a Forex notebook for your trading only. When you gain strategies that works for you, you put it down in that Forex book. Let it be your Forex book. So what is this Forex of a thing? Forex is a, is a short form for foreign exchange, all right? Forex is the short form for foreign exchange. And what is this foreign exchange? What are we exchanging? Is the exchange of currencies, 
all right now the forex market is actually the largest uh one of the largest financial markets in the world having over five to seven trillion dollars flowing in and out of it every single day every single day five to seven or even more trillion dollars flows in and out of the financial markets and that is why a lot of people can get rich with this business why because this huge amount of money that are being pumped into the financial markets a lot of traders are out there to take advantage of grabbing this money also all right so that is why you're here to learn because you want to learn how can i grab this money when this money is flowing in the market how can i be a partaker of it that is why you're here all right so foreign exchange is the process of selling one currency to buy another all right i hope you're jotting down foreign exchange is what is the ability to sell one currency to buy another or to buy one currency in order to sell another all right so what is this uh currencies that you are selling or buying the currencies are words the currencies of different countries every country has his or her currency right just like the 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 u.s have the u.s dollars all right the uh london has their great britain pound japanese have their yens all right uh south africa have their czar nigeria has naira these currencies are what we are in the market to do what to exchange okay so what is trade i'm breaking it down we we have forex exchange and we have forex trade so what is trade in a layman understanding all right we all were taught back then in school in uh, commerce or so that trade is what all about the buying and selling of goods and services right buying and selling and exchange of goods and services so when we talk about forex trade we are actually saying we are buying and selling or exchanging currencies all right so that's a very simple way to understand what the forex trading is all about now there are two types of forex trading there are two types of forex trading and when i say two types of forex trading what are the types of forex trading number one we have what we call the physical forex trading markets all right we have what we call what the physical forex trading markets so the physical forex trading market is uh we all uh know when you travel from one country to another all right you travel from one current uh, from one country to another for instance you're traveling from uh south africa and you go into america all right now as a south african you have the czar right now when you go to america you cannot use uh to buy things there all right you cannot use our currency to buy anything in america because the the, the shop sellers will be looking at you like what's this guy bringing to me you get so for you to be able to purchase anything in america you have to do what number one you have to make sure that you exchange the czar into us dollars the moment you exchange czar to us dollars and you take us dollars to any shop to buy anything then you know that yes you have arrived all right so you for you i lost sound I hope everybody can hear me clearly. Please uh, use your chat box. Somebody said he has lost the sound. Can everybody hear me? Use your chat box, traders. Yes or no. Yes or no. Let me check if it's from my side. I can hear you. All right, someone said he can hear me. Any other person? Can anybody hear me else? Anybody? Anybody? Just use your chat box, guys. Use your chat box. I just want to make sure that I'm clear. Yes. All right, let's proceed. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Apabio, please kindly check your sound from your end, okay? All right, so 
the ability for you to change your the, the czar into us dollars all right in order for you to be able to use it to buy something in america that is what we call physical forex trading all right and how actually did you change it you went to the uh exchanges money exchanges all right that's where you actually went to change that or probably you changed it in the airport the moment you landed in uh from uh south africa to america the moment you landed in the airport you exchanged the dollars quickly all right so those men or women who stand by the way and other for you to give them czar so that they can give you us dollars those are who we call forex traders who is drawing on my screen uh please stop drawing on the screen so that you wouldn't uh distract us okay so those people who give you dollars for you to give them are, are actually who we call the forex traders all right and you and them actually but you and them are the forex traders because you have given them are they've given you dollars so this is what we call physical forex trading now how actually do they make their money that is the next question you might likely ask if you do if you decide that you want to do physical forex trading how how do how do they make their profit now the way they make their profit is when you come to them with za all right let's say uh you have 200 za okay and they and you want to buy let's say 100 dollars all right if you want to buy hundred dollars, now you're going to ask them how much is one dollar cost in za. Now, if they if they decide that uh one dollar is equivalent to uh five za, all right. If they say that one dollars one dollar is equivalent to five za, then you would be have to make your calculation to know since you what you want to, since what you have is 100 za you're going to divide your 100 za by five right and that's 20. so it simply means that you're going to get 20 dollars with your 100 za all right you're going to get 20 dollars with your 100 za all right so if you ended up spending hundreds out to get just twenty dollars all right then you decided that oh i don't want to use this twenty dollars to buy anything i would love to resell this dollars so that i can make profit now what you want to do is to hold on to that twenty dollar for a while and the moment you notice that price has uh increased in uh in the moment you notice that the market has increased in price, it's probably at that time it might likely be that twenty uh, this twenty dollar which you bought for hundred za has increased to something like let's say thirty dollars for hundred za. Okay, thirty dollars for hundred za. That simply means you made ten dollar profits. All right, you have made ten dollars profits. So your ability to hold the trade or your ability to hold the money waiting for price to go up so that you can resell the dollar you have, all right, is what makes you profit. And if you hold that money and dollar falls and keeps falling and you decide that, man, I really need to sell this dollar right now and you sell that dollar off, you're going to make losses. All right. A lot of traders actually do make losses when, especially, I'm, I'm still talking about physical traders, especially maybe when they have bought enough dollars. All right. When they arrived in America, they bought enough dollars with their local currency and probably they didn't spend all the money. And it's time for them to travel back. And they know for sure that if they travel back, this dollar is not going to make sense to them in their own country. So they decided to sell it off in order to get their local currency back. And probably it could be that dollar has fallen at that particular time when you needed to exchange that dollar back to 
your local currency. So if dollar had fallen then, and you just like, man, there's no other option. I just have to exchange this money right now. You're gonna actually be in loss. Okay, that is why you you ended you end up seeing some people sometimes would decide to take that dollars and travel to their own country because they just want to hold it for a while to see. Anytime dollar rises, they can decide to go and sell it. So this is how the physical forex traders actually make their profits. Sometimes it can be a little bit hectic, you know. So that's what makes you different from them because you're not trading physically, but you're trading digitally. And that brings us to the number two. All right. Number two, when we talk about types of forex trading. So the number two is what? Digital Forex trading. Now, what is the digital Forex trading? The digital Forex trading is the state whereby you can actually buy these dollars or sell these dollars with your phone or with your laptop digitally from anywhere, from your home, from your office, in the toilet, anywhere you are digitally, all right? That's what we call the second mode of forex trading and that is what we are actually here to learn how to trade digitally with our phones and with our laptops all right so let us now proceed to what is currency pairs now because we now already we, we now understand what it what the forex trading is all about right now, these currencies that we are trading, what is it really all about also? When you hear people say currency pair, I trade currency pairs, I trade currency pairs, what is really the meaning? Now, currency pair is, is what is the uh, combination of two different currencies, all right? I hope you all are jotting because you all are always going to have assignments. All right, once in a while, I'll drop assignments. After this lecture, you're gonna have assignments because after the entire trading, you should have your certificates, all right? So I wanna have the best students. So a currency pair, when you hear currency pair, it means a currency is pairing with another currency. That's, what we, that's why we say currency pair, all right? So when you bring USD, and pair it together with GBP, that makes it a currency pair. If you don't have two different currencies pairing together, it's not a currency pair, but rather it's just a currency, okay? It's just what? A currency. So when you put them together, it's called currency pair. Now, when we have currencies that are paired, all right, we have things to be like this. Uh, we have, let's say, Euro. right and we have usd all right so let me just put something like this now this is what we call currency pair because we have the two of them together now this first currency here is called what a port it's called a port pair in the market all right. Why is it a quote pair? It's a quote pair because that is the currency that you want to buy. And this is, sorry, um, what am I saying? This is called the base. Sorry, I mean to say it's called the base pair, not the quotes. It's called the base pair. Okay, don't, please, if you wrote something, what I, if you wrote what I said before, just trying to erase it, right? So this is called the base pair, I mean to say, and this is called the quotes pair. All right, don't mind my handwriting. This is just, you know, I'm using my mouse. All right, so this is called the base pair, is the base, that is, is the foundation of the pair. So it's called the base pair because it's, it is what you want to buy, all right? And this is called the quotes pair because this is what you want to sell. You want to sell USD in other to buy Euro. All right. When you see things like GBP and uh, against U USD, it simply means that words, you want to sell your USD in other to buy GBP. 
if it was the physical forex trading it simply means that you're probably in london all right and that's why you want to buy gbp and sell off the usd so it simply means that you're coming from america and you want to sell off usd to get gbp because gbp is what we call the great britain pound that is for london right the britain gbp why usd us dollars all right so uh don't forget what i said this is going to be your base and this is going to be your port you're selling this off because you want to buy this all right people are still coming in okay you're selling this off because you want to buy this all right so uh let me see what else i have on my list so the first currency in every pair is called the base pair don't forget why the second currency is called the quote pair and i've given you a typical example now let me give you another example here probably with late uh with uh numbers so let's say for instance we have uh gbp we have g b p all right and then we have 1.204 all right and then we have usd All right, so without, don't, don't forget, this is what your base pair, and this is what your port pair. All right, this is your base pair, and this is what your port. So, at this case, it simply means that you want to do what? You want to sell USD in order for you to buy your you to buy pounds now always take note that the the base pair is always quoted as one why the quote pair is always quoted as this all right all of you already have seen a forex chart where you have uh this zone where you have uh 1.202 this this you have one point this is that that you understand on your forex chart you always see this at the end of it so these numbers you see here all right these numbers here that you see at the end of the forex chart maybe your mt5 or trading view when we get there you would see that clearly all right these numbers here are actually the quotes okay they are the quotes so you are using them to you're selling these usds in other to buy the base which is the gbp so the base pair is always signified as one that is to say you're selling 1.204 dollars in order to buy one pound okay in order to buy one pound like if you remember when we did the example of usd against za i said uh you want to sell 100 za okay what was the example that we made again okay that was we had we bought 20 dollars with 100 za simply means that one za oh um, five zars okay was equivalent to one usd one dollars right so USD was the base pair, and that was why it was quoted as one. Why ZAR was the quote pair, that was why you have five ZARs to buy one dollars. So the base pair is always identified as one. So it now depends on how many do you want to buy. Do you want to buy one pound, or do you want to buy two pounds, or do you want to buy 100 pounds so that you when you know how much you want to buy, then you know how much it, 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 it costs to buy just one of it. The moment you know how much it costs to buy just one of it, then you should know how much is going to be your total to buy all of it. All right? 
So uh, I hope everybody is understanding. If there's anything you don't understand, that is why this is the live section, okay? Make sure you are jotting them down because I always give my students the room to ask questions, all right? Okay, so let's proceed. The most popular currency pairs in the financial markets. You can, you can put that down, all right? And uh, underline it, just don't, uh, I know I said the training is 10 p.m. to 11.30, but one thing I always love to do is, even if it's up to 12 p.m. I'll always, or 12 a.m., I'll always make sure that I'm still teaching to make sure you understand better, all right? So we're not rushing. I don't like rushing when teaching, okay? so. On the line, it's the most popular currencies traded in the market. It's very important for you because by the time you start trading, you would always have that uh, scenario where you want to know which of the uh, currencies are more important for me to trade. You understand? Very, very, very important. Okay. So, jot it down. Number one, you have Euro USD. Okay. Euro USD. I think I need to put this new and save. Okay, you have Euro slash USD. Number two, you have uh, USD slash JPY. All right, number three, you have GBP, GBP slash USD. Sorry, I can't hear you though. Somebody else just said he can't hear me. Please, if you can hear me, let me know. If you can't hear me, let me know. I hope I'm audible to everyone's audience here, yeah? GBP uh, USD, RZ USD, we have RZ, that's the Australian dollar, all right, RZ and uh, USD, in a bit I will tell you why it's important for you to note this thing, so make sure you are noting it and I'll be giving daps on it because you would have, I would still give you the full names of it. Uh, USD, we have USD card, C A D card, all right? Then also we have uh, NZD, Anything you don't see clearly, just make sure you chat me up, okay? NZDUSD. Now, these are the seven important, not just, not, not actually important, seven popular, I mean to say, seven most popular currencies. It's actually called major currencies, all right, that are traded in the markets. Now, number one, why is it considered major? Why is it considered major? There are other currencies though, but why is this one considered major? There are six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, sorry, I mean to say six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, wait, I must have skipped one. Okay, uh, sorry, USD, CHF. All right, USD CHF. Please, this is not P, this is F. Don't mind my handwriting. Okay, the seven major currencies in the financial markets. Why are they considered as the major? They are considered as the major currencies because these are currencies of countries that are, uh, that, they are that their currencies are well recognized 
all right? And their currencies have values, real values in the markets. These are currencies of, or, or these are countries whose currencies are being recognized well and worldwide and forex traders are busy pumping money into it on a daily basis much more it is also considered the the, the uh, major currencies because these are currencies that have high volatility in the markets all right by the time we start uh, dealing with our charts you begin to see all these things well and understand what i mean when i say high volatility but i don't want to rush you for now so these are still the basics so when you say, when we say euro all right you already know the euro you already know the usd which is what uh the us dollars all right so this is euro against usd so you would don't get it uh twisted by saying uh usd euro because you wouldn't actually see it you won't be able to trade that in your mt5 or whatever there's nothing like usd euro is euro usd you also have usd jpy all right then you have uh the jpy is a japanese yen that's their currency the japan then you have gbp usd all right these are strong countries and strong currencies against each other all right you have our zillion dollar against us dollars you have us dollars against canadian dollars all right you have nzd that's the new zealand dollar against us dollars all right and then you have us dollars against the swiss franc okay so we also have many other currencies we have the czar all right we have uh every other every other country knows their own currencies all right so these ones are just considered as the major and by the time you start your trading you would consider taking a few of these major pairs because they are currencies that have volatilities that to move in the market you know what i when i mean volatility i mean you know the market is moved by volatility I believe you must have heard people tell you that the market is moved by volatility. When there's no volatility in the market, the price moves very sluggish. All right. Sometimes it doesn't it doesn't even move. If it if it ever moves, it moves very sluggish. You just see the candlesticks chopping and chopping and chopping. Why? Because there's no volatility in that market. But when you want to trade markets that have volatility, you would see the candlesticks are very healthy. Either it's booming up or it's booming down. You understand? That means there's good volatility in it. And these ones are considered as the major currencies because you have people pumping money into US dollars. You have euros pumping money. All right. You have the Japan. They are constructing every day. They are doing this every day. They are, they are bringing... Uh, new projects every day japan is always working hard every single day so there is no way you can exempt their currencies from major all right you have uh the pound london doing awesome the the britons doing wonders uh creating job opportunities here and there a lot of things happening in in in, in the britain that is why their currency is always booming and booming all right so i just want to give you this understanding for you to be able to understand why these uh, currencies are recognized as major what makes it actually major because of how effective the country is towards their currencies that does not mean that every other current uh, countries ain't doing well with their currencies okay but just this is for you and i as traders we know what we are here for we want to trade only what is going to give us money all right okay so moving forward moving forward moving forward i hope everybody took this notes i hope everybody took this notes okay let me create a new page for this now the next thing that we want to do all right is to see a few examples of these uh currencies and how they are being quoted okay so for instance let's say we have euro Mm. we have euro 
against USD. That is to say, USD, let's say USD currently is at 1.08. Uh, seven eight per euro per one euro. Okay, remember this is your base. This is your quote. You must not forget that. Okay, this is eight. Naughty handwriting. Okay, so now what does this mean when you see something like this? This simply means that uh, you are using USD worth of 1.0878 to buy one euro. Okay, you are using 1.0878 US dollars to buy one euro. So let us do a little mathematics here so for instance i want to buy five euros okay i want to believe everybody should have calculators right there with them okay because it's also part of the, the uh, class for instance you want to buy five euros and you have and the current the current price of one euro is for against US dollars is 1.087. So if I want to use 1.0878 to buy five euro, how much dollars do I have to spend to get that? It simply means that I will have to spend. Does anybody have an answer before you write it down? Does anybody have an answer before I write it down? How much dollars can I use to buy five euro? If dollar was currently at the rate of 1.0878 for one euro, how much dollars do I need to buy one euro? Anybody? All right. Maybe I didn't remind you guys that you would need your calculator. All right, so you would need five point four three nine dollars all right you need five point four three nine dollars in order for you to buy five euros somebody said nine point one four no it wasn't it, it isn't correct you have to plus this sorry you have to times this by five all right you have to times this by five in order for you to get how much dollars you need total to get one euro. Let us do another example. Let's say you want to buy 10 pounds. All right. You want to buy 10 pounds. Sorry, one point. 1.0878 times 5. Sorry, you didn't get it correctly. This is the right answer, okay? Let's continue. GBP. Okay, that's why I said you should be careful. My handwriting is very rough here. All right, even in real life, I have a bad handwriting. Don't mind me. All right, 10 GBP. We have you want to buy 10 GBP, but what you have is uh okay, let's say the current price of CHF that's Swiss franc. The current price of CHF is zero. Point one two. So, how many Swiss francs do I need to buy ten pounds? Who can tell me? This is your formula.
That would be 1.2. Okay, 1.2, good. So I need 1.2 Swiss franc in order to buy 10 GBP. And what does that really mean? For you to be able to actually use just 1.2 Swiss franc to buy 10 GBP, you know what that means? Tell me, somebody, somebody tell me, what does that mean? What do you think happened to GBP? If you are using 1.2 Swiss franc to buy 10 GBP, what happened to GBP? I want to make sure that you guys are getting the Forex idea here. It means uh, the GBP has gone down. Good. So it's, it simply means that GBP has gone down. Something has happened which has made the GBP currency to fall massively. And this is where Forex traders make profits, especially the physical Forex traders, all right? So they know how they do their calculation, all right? So we are not doing physical trading here. We, are doing, we want to do uh, the digital. So for you to be able to use this little amount of Swiss franc to buy this huge amount of Great Britain pound simply means that GBP is weak. And that's one thing that makes currency pair trading sweet because you can re you can easily predict the market by the when you know what is happening in the economy of the of the of that country, all right? You know, unlike the boom and crash and uh, volatility index that is uh, determined by uh, those who move the market by themselves, they know how they move that market. You you just can easily predict the boom and crash and the volatility index but the currency pair can easily be predicted if you can understand what is happening in that country's economy all right and that's when we will begin to talk about fundamental analysis when we get there all right you people will really understand the whole logic you would see forex becoming more easier for you all right but now let's not dive in there so gbp is weak has fallen so deep that someone who had uh so that someone who has just 1.2 swiss franc can buy 10 gbp now all he needs to do is just simply probably to hold that 10 gbp and believing that the economy will rise back one day and if it rises he's gonna make a lot of money if he sells that gbp against swiss franc all right so that's the little mass that we are going to do now the next mass we're going to face in the nearest future is when we start calculating pips but let's keep moving for now so basic forex languages that you must understand a new subtopic write it down and underline basics basic uh forex languages that you must understand very very important because now you are a trader all right you don't want to talk like like a, a market man or a market woman. You want to talk like a forex trader. So you, we have languages that we speak that when I say it, you know automatically what I mean. All right. So these are very important uh, languages you must understand. So let's proceed. One, currency. All right currency when i say currency as a trader you should know what that means all right it is the commodity that are being traded a currency is the commodity that are being traded make sure you are writing though because you're going to write i'm going to give you all assignments all right number two currency pair All right, currency pair. Like I told you guys earlier, it is the combination of two different currencies. Okay, number three, we have PIP. All right, we have what we call PIP. PIP is the smallest number that moves in a currency, or you can actually say, PIP is percentage in price. That is like, that is the full uh, name of the abbreviation. PIP, P 
percentage in price. And what is this percentage in price? It is the smallest number that makes a move or that moves in the currency markets, okay? We all always see uh, when, we, when you're on your charts, you'd see price, when price is moving up, you will see it's increasing by one, two, three. If it's going back, if it's going back down, or if, if it's going back up, it, it goes back to two, one, zero. You understand? So those little numbers are what we call PIP. By the time you make the calculations inside of those numbers, you'll be able to find out what is percentage, the percentage in, in that price movement. Okay, so PIP. Number four, we have what we call bull or bullish. All right, bullish. This simply means when price is in an upward direction. When price is worth in an upward direction. So please come again in currency currency okay i said currency is the commodity that are being traded okay currency is a commodity that are being traded currency pair is the combination of two different currencies number three pip percentage in price that's the full abbreviation and it is the smallest uh, as I said, it is the smallest number that moves in the currency markets or in the financial markets. The smallest number, it, it increases, it decreases at any time. Okay, that's what we call PIP. Then you have bull or bullish. This is quoted as when price is in an upward direction. Number five, we have bear. or bearish all right this means price is in a downward direction so you don't want to come to me and tell me hey tim us dollar is going up i would look at you like where is it going is it in the sky or <laughs> you understand i hope it's not going to land in the sea all right you can you have to come and you tell me tim us dollar is bullish and I will understand. And if I come and say, hey, traders, the Great Britain pound was bearish today, everybody automatically understands what I meant. So anybody who isn't a trader would be like, what is these people saying? Bearish, bullish. I hope they're not trying to uh, unleash an animal here, but we know what we are saying, okay? So bullish for upward direction, bearish for downward direction. Number six, we have what we call consolidation. Consolidation. Or range. All right consolidation or range. It also can be called indecision. I don't know who wrote this, who drew this red marker on my board. Please, if you're the one, kindly use the eraser to clean it off, okay? Or what did I call it again? Indecision. Just don't mind my handwriting, okay? In decision. The three of them are all the same thing. Consolidation, range, or indecision simply means that price is not going bullish, neither is it bearish. It's just moving straight. It's not going up. It's not coming down. It's just moving straight, sideways direction like this. All right? So a bullish direction is like this, right? A bearish direction is like this, right? 
but a range goes straight. So at this time, at this uh, phase is called consolidation, range, or indecision. Why is it called indecision? It's called indecision because this is the era where the, 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 the two currencies have no decision of where to go, all right? The people pumping money into the financial markets, they don't know where, what they want to do for the meantime. It's not cleaning. It ought to clean because you should have an eraser there. Use the eraser, okay? So when there is no uh, direction for the market, it, is, it, it means that the, the, the people pumping money into the markets, pro may, probably maybe the money they have is on, this, is on the same rank, okay? Because this is how the thing actually works. Hey, you're drawing more. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Just leave it like that. Leave it like that, we'll manage it, okay? This is actually how the financial market is being moved, how price is being moved. If US, all right, if US, that's America, comes into the financial market with $1 trillion, let's say they come in with $1 trillion. How am I gonna write it now? Okay, I hope you guys have copied the notes though because I wanna clear it all off. Though the session is being recorded, so you can always watch it later, right? So, for instance, let's say London comes in with one billion pounds. Okay, they come in with one billion pounds. So how do I even write this? Uh, one billion pounds okay g b p and they came in against us and us came in with one trillion dollars all right u s d okay US dollars came in with $1 trillion. GBP came in with 1 billion pounds, all right? If this $1 trillion is, tr is much greater than pounds, or if there's something wrong with the Britain economy, all right, that makes their currency lose value, and then suddenly this US dollars that is the quotes suddenly becomes strong in their economy, all right? This market will be bearish. I hope you understand. If anything is wrong with Great Britain economy and their 1 billion pounds fails in value or loses value, and suddenly the US dollar, which is a trillion US dollars, all right, is strong in their economy. This market will be bearish. Remember what I told you that this is the base. This being the base means that you are selling USD to buy pounds. This means that on the norms, this, current, this market is meant to be bullish, which means that pounds, you're buying pounds, okay? Pounds is strong. It simply means that uh, GBP is strong. That is why you're you, that is why you're selling off your USD to buy GBP because you don't want to buy uh, something that is not making sense, right? So you want to buy something that makes sense. That's why you're willing to sell off USD to buy pounds because it's bullish. If anything happens to the the economy of the the, the Great Britain that makes their currency begin to fall, okay? It simply means that this US dollar is strong. Because for pounds to continue to go up means that US dollar is still weak in their economy. They are weak. Not, sometimes it might not be that they are weak. It might just be that pounds is, Britain is still stronger than them. And that's why the market will have to still be bullish. 
if Britain loses strength in economy in any way, maybe probably because of unemployment or maybe some kind of thing just happened around, okay? By the time we start doing fundamental, you will begin to see uh, some of all these reasons why a currency can rise or fall, all right? I just don't want to go back going deep into there. I just want you to see and understand how these markets move, all right? So if anything happens to the economy of Great Britain that makes their currency fall, US dollar will be stronger than it. And if US dollar is stronger than it, it simply means that the market will, will keep falling. So the more the market is falling, okay, the more the market is falling, it simply means that anybody who placed a sell would be making money also because Great Britain is falling. And for Great Britain to be falling means people are buying the Great Britain. People are using US, are selling US dollars, all right? They are selling US dollars and buying Great Britain. That's what it means. That's why I said they are selling, okay? Because I know some people might be a bit confused now. Why should I sell since Britain is, is falling? You should sell because you're selling dollars to buy the pounds since it's falling because you know that by the time you buy it and hold it, when it rises, you're going to be in profits. That's the, the, uh, the back end uh, understanding of the market, okay? So you're selling US dollars. That's why you place a sell when pound is weak, okay? And then if pound suddenly bounces back up and starts gaining strength again, you as a trader want to start buying, all right? You want to start doing what? Buying, okay? So when one country's economy is strong, is stronger than the other, this is what happens. The market goes either bullish or bearish. But when the two co countries' economy are strong, both are strong, all right, the market will be consolidating indecision. Why, uh, why is the indecision occurring? Because the two are strong, all right? The bulls are trying to push up. The bears say, no way, I have, I have a lot of money. The bears are trying to push down. The bulls say, come on, I, I too have a lot of money. So they continue to consolidate until one person fails in one way or the other. And then you see price break out and continue to the upside or to the downside. By the time we, get, we start dealing with our charts, you begin to understand these things properly well. I just needed to show you what makes a market bullish, bearish, or range. Okay? So back to where we were. And that is what our languages of forex trading so we have what we call lot size make sure you are jotting down your questions in case if you have questions okay lot size we have what we call stop loss These are forex languages, all right, that you must understand, forex terminologies. We have what we call take profits. Okay. Okay. We also have what we call beat. We have what we call ask. This is A, okay? We have what we call spread. I believe a lot of you have your MT5 or MT4. So you should have seen all this once there. SP spread. All right, we have what we call break even. I believe a lot of you hear that oftentimes. Break even. E V E N. We have what we call indicator.
okay? So what is the lot size? What is the lot size when you hear a trader say lot size? You, I, I believe a lot of you hear what, when people say, how many lot size should I use, okay? So what is actually the lot size all about? What is the lot size about? in the financial market why is it important now a lot size is for instance uh when when you want to open up a trade okay when you want to open up a trade there's something i forgot to tell you guys when uh, about peep when i was talking about uh, peep percentage and price all right peep now you you know for instance we say things like i want to buy mango of 5000 us dollars oh okay or oh, i want to buy mango for 5000 naira now in the in the forex market you don't say you don't call the name of the currency you call it pip like how much you make all right you can say i have 100 naira i have 2000 naira so in the financial market, you say, I, ha I have 100 pips or I made 20 pips, okay? So you must, you must understand that fact. So what is lot size? A large number of amounts or, of a, or, or, a, or a, I don't even know how I can actually explain it to make you guys really understand. A particular group, a particular amount that you are willing to risk against the market okay the amount you're willing to risk against the market is calculate is quoted as lot sizes okay by the time we start studying more about lot size you know the diff you will see the different kinds of lot sizes and then how to use the lot sizes to calculate your real amount of money in order for you to know how much you're trading with or how much you're risking okay so instead of you to say I'm risk, I want to risk five dollars. All right. Your lot size is what is going to bring out the quotation of how much you really want to risk. And it's going to give you the, quote, the, the quotation in form of pips. Then from the pips, you'll be able to know how much is really worth in dollars. You would understand it better when we start treating uh that topic. Okay. But for now, you might likely not really understand it because even me myself. I'm still a bit confused on how to explain it, okay? So, but let's just dive into other ones. We have the stop loss, which everybody should know. This is the ability for you to set up an area or a zone where price have to get to and stop taking off losses from your account. And you have take profit, which is a zone where price would have to get to and take your profits of the market for you automatically okay then we have what we call beat in the market we have what we call beat now what is beat beat is the amount that a trader is willing to buy all right you have gbp usd you have gbp against usd all right you're willing to buy your, your 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 bid like i said earlier is the amount that a trader is willing to buy you're willing to buy five pounds all right your your us dollars is currently 1.02 let's say 1.02 so you're willing to buy five pounds you have 1.02 you want to buy pounds and i tell you if you want to buy pounds, you have to buy pounds from me for 1.03. And you say, no, I have 1.02. And I say, no, I can only sell it for 1.03. Okay. And I say, no, I can only sell it for 1.03. And you just think about it and you're like, man, what I have in my wallet is not up to 1.03 US dollars. I want to buy it for 1.02. And I said, okay, let me sell it to you at the rate of 
So the, the amount that you are willing to buy, which is 1.02, you're willing to risk 1.02 to buy, per, you're willing to risk 1.02 per pounds. So this 1.02 is the amount that you're willing to buy per pound for pounds, right? And that is what we call bid, the amount a trader is willing to buy. Why ask is the amount a trader is willing to sell, okay? So you said, no, what I have is $1.02. I said, no, I want 1.03. I can sell one pound for you for 1.02, probably to my best uh, understanding, or probably I know why I don't want to sell it to you like that. Maybe I'm going to make a, a bit loss, or maybe the profit is not going to be enough for me. That's why I want to sell it for 1.03, all right? And, but you keep insisting, come on, I have only 1.02. US dollars, give it to me, please. And I say, okay, no problem, I'll accept it. So the, the amount that I'm willing to accept from you in order to sell my GBP to you, all right, is what we call ask, okay? The amount a trader is willing to sell. I'm willing to sell my one pound at the rate of 1.02 for you, okay? He made a mistake when writing it. What was that? Uh, did. Okay, bid. Oh, sorry, guys. I didn't even see what you were talking about. Okay, bid, B I D. Okay, B I D. All right. So, spread. Now, spread is a difference between the, the bid and the ask. Okay, the bid and the ask. What is, for instance, you are. Uh, I myself, I bought this pounds, this five pounds, I bought it at the rate of, let's say, let me clean every single thing here so we can have a clean chart again. All right. So I bought five pounds. When I bought five pounds, okay, I have five pounds and each of those pounds, I bought one pound at the rate of 1.001 US dollars. Okay, so if I, if the time I wanted to, I, the time I bought GBP, if the time I bought GBP, dollars was currently at 1.001 .001, and I decided that I wanted to buy five pounds. So how much did I actually spend? How much dollars did I actually spend to buy five pounds times five? It means I spent 5.005 USD. Okay, so this was how much dollars I used to buy five pounds. Now I held that pounds till dollar, uh, maybe I held the pounds and dollar increased by price, all right? Maybe something happened in the, in the dollar currency and uh, the gain value, they increased to 1.0, two okay now when pound increased to, when us dollar increased to this you came to me and said hey i want to buy your five pounds and i said huh, okay if you want to buy my five pounds i will sell it to you at the rate of one point one Okay, and I said I was gonna sell it to you at the rate of 1.1 USD for one pound. So remember, this was how much I bought pounds before, all right? So if you agree to sell your US dollars at the rate of 1.1, all right? It simply means that, uh, 
if you if you agree to sell your US dollar at the rate of 1.1 dollar per one pound, it simply means that you're gonna get my you're gonna pay me what five points five USD. Okay, to get my five pounds. You're gonna pay me 5.5 words USD. So five. 0.5 USD that you paid me minus 5.005. How much is that? 5.005. That is 0 0.495 USD. This is the profit that I made. So this profit is what we call the spread. Okay, this profit that I made is what we call the spread. That is why I said it is the difference between the bid and the ask. Is the difference between how much the trader is willing to sell and how much the trader is willing to buy, all right? So different between bid and ask is the, is the amount in between them. That is the spread. Now, we also talked about uh, break even, okay? What is break even? Break even, because you will hear this oftentimes. In fact, you already hear it oftentimes. Maybe if you have joined uh, a signal that where someone tells you buy this, sell that, and letter tells you, hey, set your stop loss at break even. Mm -hmm. So break even simply means your ability to not lose any amount of money, neither did you make any amount of money. You did not lose, you did not make money. How can that really be possible? Maybe, for instance, you bought pounds at you bought pounds at one point one USD on first of February. You held this pounds and held it and held it till first of September, and you decided that you want to sell it. But everybody in the market kept on saying, I can only sell my USD for 1.1. I can only sell it for 1.1. Nobody wants to increase price or decrease price. And you ended up saying, man, I just need to travel out of this country right now and I need to change this. So there's no way out. So I have to change it by all means. So you decided to sell it at the same price you bought it. You did not make profits and you didn't make loss. That is break even. This, I'm, I'm combining both the physical forex trading and the digital forex trading so you understand things better. So for the digital for the digital forex trading, which is what we are here doing, when you sell, let's say you sold USD, all right, and this is where you sold from, price went low, all right, and probably started coming back up. You, when you sold, you set you, you, you had set your stop loss here, right? And then when price went low as it went, you decided to put your trail your stop loss from where it was here to exactly where you took your entry. That's what we call break even. So if price goes back up against you and hits your stop loss here, you're not going to be in loss, neither will you be in profit. That is what we call break even. I'll explain again for buy, for the bullish now. You bought GBP from here. Price was going bullish. Your stop loss was here when you bought it. So probably price, uh, let's say, let me let me show you, let me put it, do it how it it plays with our emotions sometimes. You bought it here, you set your stop loss here. All right, price started playing around your entry going close to your stop loss, went back up, came close, then finally went bullish. And you said, wow, thank God. And then you strolled this stop loss from here. You put it exactly where you, where you bought from, the same line. 
all right so while your stop loss is at the same line price started coming back down and hit that stop loss you're not going to be in loss neither will you be in profits why because you have set break even but actually psychologically nobody wants to see himself not make a little profit when price has gone as up as that so what we actually do is instead of setting your stop loss exactly where you took the entry just put it up a bit small all right so if price hits it probably you leave the market with just few little dollars or maybe little cents okay it's better you take little cent than you took nothing because actually there are some certain markets that sometimes even if your your stop loss with us was at exactly your entry break even if price hits it it's still going to take little cent from you it happens and i believe a lot of you should have experienced that it happens so it is advisable even if someone says set your stop loss at break even it is advisable don't set your stop loss at the exact place you took your entry take it up a little bit just a little bit so if price hits it Maybe it gives you one or two cents. It is better it gives you a, a blue than it gives you a red or nothing. Okay. So take note of that by the time you start your full time trading. If you're using a, a break even, don't put it at exactly where you bought or sold from. Take it up a little bit. Okay. Come again, please. What do you want me to re explain? Just let me know, please. Uh, I'm just seeing your message. He made a mistake when. I don't, I'm just seeing your message, okay? Whatever you want me to explain again, just when we start questions and answers, okay? All right, so that's for break even. Now, the last one we have on our list is indicator, which everybody should know. Indicator is on your MT5 right there. So with indicator, boom and crash does that a lot, most especially when you're against the spike. Yes, all right? Okay, you already have experience of that. Okay, so with the indicator is just a, a constructed thing that we use to calculate what has happened in the past, okay? And, and uh, use it to see what might likely happen in the future. But sometimes these indicators can lag, they can make mistakes, they can be slow, right? Price might likely do what it wants to do before the indicator indicates something. So it is best when you learn how to trade without indicators and that is why you guys join this this training because you want to learn pure price action so in this training we're not going we're going to be focusing more on price action if there's ever going to be a reason for indicator it's going to come up and uh, you also learn how to use it when the time comes okay so that's that for that let me see if i have one more uh, subtopic before we close for the day okay all right so that's what we have for today all right so i would love to take questions for those who have questions and tomorrow we will proceed let me see what we have on a syllable for tomorrow so your questions guys i'm ready for your questions okay tomorrow we talk about candlestick and patterns okay so if you have questions uh, i would love to take your questions uh, but before we begin with questions let me give you traders advice very very important okay as a trader there are things that you must understand when it comes to trading the financial markets i i, I even forgot i didn't talk about your trading tools as a trader, things that you should, you ought to have. But there are things you know already, okay? You should know uh, as a trader, you should have MT5, okay? You should uh, have your phone, your laptop. These are your trading tools, okay? These are things that you need to be able to trade the markets, all right? You should also have funds to fund your account to be able to trade against the markets. So let's talk about traders' advice. Now, I know everybody wants to learn how to trade because we want to make money, but we must not fail to understand 
that in this market, in the race of wanting to make money, you can also lose money. It is very important that you always have that at the back of your mind. You must not come into the market with a get rich quick uh, mindset, because if that's what you are here for, you it is quite unfortunate if I say that you might not be successful in your trading career, right? If you want to be a successful trader, you must get that out of the back of your mind. Don't come into the trading industry with the mindset of, I want to get rich quick. I want to make quick money. I want to join others and drive Lamborghini now. It's a gradual process. Forex trading is a gradual process. Even though you have $10,000 and you load it into your trading uh, account, if you are not a, a disciplined trader, you will still blow it. So you must always understand that if you're coming into this market, it is not a market we come into joke. It is serious business. It is your hard-earned money. Therefore, you must not gamble against the market. You must make sure you trade the market with your traders' trading wisdom. If, 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 if Forex was all about gambling, nobody would want to learn how to trade. Everybody would just want to pump in money there, buy anywhere, sell anywhere. If it enters, yeah. If it doesn't enter, oh. But because it's a business, that is why you spend, you, you spend money to come and learn it. So now that you are in the academy to learn how to trade it, you must put your head down, get the pride off you, get the get rich quick uh, mindset off you. Just put it far away from you. Don't need it at all. Okay. All that you need right now is nothing else but humbleness, discipline. All right. Humbleness and discipline is what you need for you to be able to be successful in your trading career. I don't want to put fear in your mind, but I'll have to tell you nothing else but the truth, okay? There is no need telling you that, hey, forex is very easy, come on, when I know it's not true. But on the other hand, you must not be afraid because a lot of people are successful in forex. Therefore, you too can be successful. But there is one thing that differentiates those that are successful from those that are unsuccessful. And that is one thing, discipline, indiscipline and discipline. So you have to be a disciplined trader for you to be able to, to be successful. Now, what do I mean by being disciplined? When I say you need to be disciplined, I mean you need to be a trader who sets rules and be strict to his or her rules. Today, I want to buy. Tomorrow, I want to sell. Today, I don't want to do anything. Today, I just want to take this little and leave. Today, if I lose this amount, I'm off. And you stick to it. This is you setting a rule and you stick to that rule. Be disciplined. A lot of traders make money a day and lose it and even lose more than what they made that same day. Why? Because of indiscipline. Number one is greed. They, they thought they could make more money. And at the end of the day, they lost it. But it's all, all, it all still boils out to be indisciplined. They were not disciplined. Because if they were disciplined, they would have said, oh, this little have made today. Wow, let me manage it. All right? NASDAQ is volatility. It is not part of currency pair. It's volatility. All right? So you must be humble and be disciplined in this trade, in this uh, journey. This is a journey, is an industry, is a career. If you learn it, you would, it is to, for your own good. That is why I said everybody should have his or her notebooks so that you don't just learn out of the blow, but you have things you have written in your book so that you can teach people in the nearest future because there are several ways you can make money in this forex industry. You can make money from teaching people. 
you grab the knowledge, full-time knowledge, and you teach people how to trade, and they pay you to, to, for you to teach them, just like you all paid to join this academy. So learning alone is the money, but how much more applying what you've learned into action, that is taking trades and being successful in your trade. So traders, I want you all to believe in yourself, believe in God that you'll be successful, all right? And be disciplined. So tonight, you're, you're, oh, you're just going to go and decide within yourself, am I ready to learn? If you're ready to learn, then you're welcome to the industry. If you're not ready to learn, I'm sorry, you just end up wasting your money, okay? So another thing you must understand is as a trader, you don't gamble against the markets. You trade against the markets. When you are trading against the market without a strategy, you are automatically gambling. So you must make sure you have a strategy before you, you trade against the markets. So in the process of our training, you would learn how to trade. You would learn how to develop your own style of trading or strategy of trading. And you will learn how to also use it and put it to action. Now, there is this thing that a lot of, that used to be difficult for a lot of traders back then, which is phones to start their trading career. But now we have Forex phones that are coming up and funding traders. So it is now easy, Forex is now getting more interesting and more easier to win. Because by the time you are able to gain fund of $10,000 to trade against the markets, I don't, I don't see why you should still remain in a nine to five job. But for you to really be successful with the amount given to you to trade, you have to first of all, mellow down and learn how to trade first, else you can need to blow this money off. So this now you don't need to stress your mind about how much do I need to start this trading career. There are, there are companies ready to fund you. What you need to do for now is learn how to trade first. Okay? Learn how to trade first. Very, very important. Uh, I think I had one more thing in mind to talk about. Uh, okay? If I remember it, I'll, maybe I'll have to drop it later in the group. So for now, have you questions? I would love to answer. I'm late. Can I get the recorded sections after the meeting? Yes, you would get it. It's been recorded. All right, questions, traders. Does anybody have question? Okay, so it simply means that everything that I thought from beginning to the end was understood. So tomorrow we'll be treating candlesticks, okay? We'll be treating candlesticks tomorrow. So uh, you should you should go get the, get the videos that I for the twenty twenty one academy session. Start getting yourself equipped with the candlesticks so that when I'm teaching tomorrow, it's gonna be much easier and faster for you to understand and pick up everything that I will teach tomorrow. All right, I want tomorrow to be very interactive. While I'm asking questions, I want to see answers flowing in and out. That would prove to me that you have studied what I gave you. All right? So guys, very good introduction class. I love it. Cool guys, cool guys, cool guys. All right, so for the main time traders, stay safe, keep winning, keep learning, and keep making it big time. So please, I can assess the 21 materials due to. So I can't assess the 21 materials due to my email. Can I drop another mail, please? You chat me up, okay? Chat me up on Telegram. So we we set it out. All right.
All right, traders. So for the meantime, stay safe and keep winning. So we'll see you again tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, Saturday, right?